The annual Dunlop tyre test at Daytona International Speedway was rained out on day one. Damp and foggy conditions on the second day of the test limited the Daytona sport bikes effectively to just one session. PJ Jacobson clocked the quickest trip around the newly paved circuit with a time of 151.8 on his Ducati Evo 848. PJ is backed by Barry Gilson and Celtic Racing and Araldo Ferracci who joined forces this year to campaign the series with the new Ducati. It's uh, kind of like riding a 250, you know, it's a uh, very uh, nice and uh, small bike for me because I'm a small guy. Uh, I like the torque and uh, everything about it, it's a, it's a really nice bike. The new Evo 848 is also run by Latest Racing with Jason DeSalvo who makes his return to American soil after a stint in World Supersport on the Park and Go BE1 Triumph in 2010. I really like it. It's got a couple little characteristics that are uh, particular to the, the twin engine configuration, but I'm getting them figured out pretty good and, and I kind of like it. Jason finished the test third quickest with a 152.1. Missing from the test was Jake Holden, who's finally found a home and will be riding with the DNA Energy Drink Robison Motorsports Ducati 848 Evo. After being quite public about the lack of seats in the AMA paddock, Jake Zemke and Project One Atlanta have teamed up for the Daytona 200 in what seems to be at the moment a one-race deal. Guys Perry over here at Project One Atlanta called me up and said, hey, uh, it was a week ago, said, hey, you want to come down to Daytona and ride the bike? Thought about it, said, yeah, that sounds like a good time. So here we are. It's uh, we're just doing the one race as of right now. It's uh, just for Daytona 200. As you can see, there's nothing on the side of the bike but blackness. So we're out there hunting for some sponsors to get this thing off the ground and rolling, and we'll just take it from there. But uh, so far, so good. Jake won the Daytona 200 in 2006, and in 2010, P1A took second place in the 200 with Dane Westby. This is a team that is very capable of winning the Daytona 200. You know, they've definitely got their pit stops down, so that's a very important part of the 200. And, you know, I'm feeling good on the bike. There's definitely a lot left in it. Um, definitely not riding the bike to its potential yet, so there's a lot more to come come March, and I think, uh, I think we're sitting good. We're looking good. So, you know, with only doing one race, we've got one goal, and that's to win. And uh, uh, that's your goal every race, but sometimes guys are thinking about championships and getting points and things like that, and, you know, we're just going to let it all hang out for one race, and see if we can't win another Daytona 200. Jake looked fast straight away and finished the test with the second fastest time of the day a 151.9. The 2010 Daytona Sport Bike Champion Martin Cardenas has graduated into American Superbikes and will not be running the number one plate in the class. Dane Westbury will fill his slot with the team riding the number five M4 Suzuki GSX-R 600. There's no doubt that sparks will fly in the tightly contested Daytona Sport Bike class as one of the biggest rivalries of the series will commence in March when Danny Eslick and Josh Herod take to the track. Danny went fourth quickest with a 152.4 and we asked Danny about how Martin's absence would affect the class. It's, it's going to affect it, but it's not going to affect it. You know, it's uh, just one less guy that's got a shot at winning it because Martin won, what, nine races last year? So, you know, uh, I, I don't mind not having him in the class this year, but... You know, with everybody else, there's still, you know, it's still anybody's ball game. It's not going to make my job any easier because there's eight or ten guys that uh, that can get the job done out there. So, you know, I just want to look forward to trying to put the, the guy Coke Suzuki up front. Josh Herring was absent from the test, healing from wrist surgery. He did have an opportunity to ride in December when a handful of riders were invited to test the new surface for initial feedback. Corey West will be joined by Taylor Knapp, the Vesra Suzuki for 2011. I'm really excited about it. Excited to have uh, you know the backing behind me, and uh, you know I've always kind of done things on my own and kind of ran my own team, and it just takes a lot of pressure off me to have a, a good group of guys behind me. And uh, I'm just excited to get started. I can't wait. Santiago Villa will return to TeamRoadRacingWorld.com, and JD Beach moves up from the Supersport class to ride in the Cycle World Attack Performance Kawasaki ZX6R in the Daytona 200 for what looks like at this point a one race deal. It looks really nice and I got a really good crew with me so uh, I think if we can get if, if we can get some track time and figure some things out I think uh, I think come come Daytona it should be uh, it should be a pretty good bike. 
Tommy Aquino returns to being a Graves Yamaha supported rider, but it's unclear as to just what the program might look like. Other test attendees were Reese Wacker and Paul Allison, running privateer programs for the 2011 season. This year, the 200 returns to a daytime race. I like it. The night race has been a lot of fun. Um, done it a couple times, and it's different. Throws another challenge into it, but I, I like riding in the day. It seems to be a little bit safer for everybody, and uh, look forward to it. Maybe it'll bring a few more fans out. If you can't make it to Daytona for the races in March, be sure to tune in to Speed for all the race action for the kickoff of the AMA race season at the Daytona 200.